Rim Country News brought to you by Jake's Corner Bar and Grill. Same stop, different horses since 1916. And by Terlucas and Brandt CPA PLLC, with a long history of providing quality CPA services right here in Rim Country. On this Monday, May 10th, for Tano TV, KRIM Radio News, and Global Trails Media, I'm Randy Roberson with your Rim Country News headlines. Well, there's been three different wildfires burning over the weekend that had numerous fire crews scrambling to battle the flames while some evacuations were ordered in certain communities. Now, a wildfire burning in a remote, rugged landscape southwest of Crown King has caused evacuations after burning 2,448 acres of land, that according to the Yavapai County Sheriff's Office Sunday morning. Evacuations have been ordered for multiple areas, including Minnehaha, Fort Misery, and Horse Thief Basin. A shelter was set up at the Mayor High School, and a set alert has also been issued for Crown King, signaling that residents there should begin preparing for possible evacuation orders. Now, what's being called the Tussock Fire started on Saturday afternoon, approximately eight miles southwest of Crown King. Now, as we mentioned, the fire was mapped yesterday at 2,448 acres and has reached the Prescott National Forest boundary. Due to the lack of moisture, hot, dry, windy conditions, and rugged terrain, a Type 1 incident management team has been ordered to assist with the incident management on that fire. Well, a little bit closer to home here in Payson, fire crews are being shuttled to the Maverick Fire, and they're being shuttled in by helicopter while reconnaissance flights uh, were assessing the fire's overnight progression. The location of the Maverick Fire in steep and rugged terrain has made access for resources difficult. Clint Remington, fire management officer for the Mesa Ranger District, said, quote, It's hard to get folks in because it's steep and rocky and there aren't roads close enough for them to try to hike to the fire. Well, overnight weather conditions aided containment efforts that were made by uh, hotshot crews that were flown in uh, late Saturday afternoon. Now, yesterday, fire crews were able to safely secure the east and west flanks of the Maverick Fire. Aerial resources then concentrated retardant and water drops on the most active portion of the north edge where uh, terrain keeps the fire inaccessible by firefighters on the ground. Uh, the great news is that uh, all fire resources were scheduled to be flown off the fire at the end of the shift yesterday. Suppression efforts uh, have been uh, halted, or they, rather it has faulted the fire progression around two-thirds of the perimeter where uh, firefighters were able to uh, safely work within the, the rugged terrain. Now the head of the fire remains moderately active but is currently holding along the Indian Creek drainage. Now the fire crews will monitor the fire's behavior from a safe vantage point and help direct suppression efforts by aerial resources. Now the Maverick fire is uh, again, uh, you know, has been burning quite a bit. Estimated right now at about a thousand acres down there. There's currently no closure in the area, and then a third fire continued to burn over the weekend, and this one is down near Globe. Uh, you may have heard us talk about it last week. The Gila County Sheriff's Office uh, shared that firing operations were successful over the weekend on the Copper Canyon fire, as firefighters were able to tie in the northeast side of the fire into the 2020 Griffin fire burn scar. There was no new acreage or containment reported yesterday. Crews were busy yesterday patrolling the fire's perimeter, checking for hot spots and beginning mop-up. A pocket of unburned fuel remains within the interior of the fire on the northeast side and may produce smoke as uh, afternoon winds are expected to increase again today. While fire activity has significantly decreased, our recent winds well, they've been a significant concern with uh, gusts up to around 35 miles per hour. Now, due to significant guardrail damage along the US-60, that highway remains closed at last report as ADOT continues with their evaluations. And finally, while some of these wildfires continue to be fought, uh, other beneficial prescribed burn operations are continuing. So, why is it that we conduct prescribed burns? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Here's Vic, he's our forest fuel specialist from up on top of the Muggy on Rim, talking about how the upper Beaver Creek burn will result in soil nitrification and wildlife habitat improvements. Today I'm over here at the upper Beaver Creek burn, uh, the prescribed burn that we're doing for uh, reduction of uh, fire hazard, wildlife habitat, 
uh, range improvement, and all the things that prescribed fire can do for us. So southwestern ponderosa pine trees, like what's behind me, uh, keep in mind those things have evolved with fire uh, for thousands of years. Ponderosa pine used to burn historically about every two to 12 years, and so it needs that rejuvenation. Fire will come through in um, a process called nitrification. It'll actually turn uh, nutrients that are locked up in, in the system into usable uh, nutrients. Um, it'll also, of course, reduce fire hazard. It'll increase water yield. It'll increase uh, water quality over time. Um, it improves wildlife habitat, wildlife browse, wildlife forage, and of course domestic livestock uh, all the same. And it makes nutrients uh, in the forage and browse more palatable for wildlife and uh, domestic livestock. So the whole fire process is necessary, and that's why we're out here trying to keep fire in the system. Well, coming up in Rim Country weather, breezy to windy weather is expected again today with the windiest conditions in eastern Arizona. So what does the rest of your seven-day forecast hold in store? Well, a complete look is coming up next. You're watching Rim Country News. Jake's Corner Bar and Grill. It's not just a bar, it's a destination. Jake started out as an Arizona stage stop way back in 1916, and folks have been stopping here ever since. Jake's also has been famous as a popular stopping spot for travelers headed to Rim Country or Roosevelt Lake. But as more people discover this historic stop, more and more, it becomes the destination. It was even featured in the 2008 movie Jake's Corner and later featured at the Sedona Film Festival. Ice cold beers from the tap, imported or specialty beers, a generously stocked full bar, and great food that keeps you wanting to come back again and again. Enjoy a game of pool inside or step out and enjoy the covered patio and outdoor bar with live entertainment and much more. We hope to see you soon at one of the most historic stopping spots in Arizona. Jake's Corner Bar and Grill. It's not just a bar, it's a destination. Hello, this is Brian Bowman. We have Pace and Tire Pros and Automotive. And one of the best things about having a business in town is the local community. Uh, we found Terlucas and Brandt to do our taxes. Amy's been a critical component for our business to be successful. We are very thankful for them and their professionalism. So if you're looking to have somebody do your taxes and you want to find somebody good that's willing to work with you, Amy is awesome. Terlucas and Brandt is who we suggest. Taking a look now at your Rim Country seven day weather forecast, a weak trough will be the, uh, on the move through the northern Great Basin today into Colorado by tonight. As a result, you can expect another round of gusty west to southwest winds ahead of the trough axis uh, through much of the day today, especially over in the eastern zones of Arizona. Very dry boundary layer conditions and wind gusts into the 30 to 35 mile an hour range will allow a few areas in Apache County to approach critical fire weather conditions this afternoon. However, for the most part, most areas should stay out of that criteria. For that matter, a light shower or two could develop later today and this evening, but primarily uh, the chances for that look to be over in the northern Apache County area to our east. Now by tomorrow, ridging pushes into Arizona and daytime temperatures will rise above normal as a result, along with less wind. Now this pattern uh, is expected to last through Thursday or Friday, but will then be replaced by more troughing by next weekend, and that could bring a few showers to our area along with more windy conditions. So stay tuned for more information on that as the week progresses and we get a little closer to the weekend. Well, highs and lows around Rim Country today, well, they're actually looking quite nice. Here in Payson today, under beautiful sunny skies, we should see a high of 76 degrees with our low tonight dropping to around 48. Up on top of the rim at Forest Lakes, 65 is their forecast high today. And the National Weather Service out of Flagstaff, well, they say Forest Lakes should have a low tonight with it cooling off to around 39 degrees for their low. Our neighbors up in the communities of Pine and Strawberry, well, you folks today should see a high near 71 degrees with your low tonight dropping down to about 44. Over in Young, uh, they should have a high today right around 77 degrees with their low tonight uh, expected to drop to around 43. Down in the deserts of Tano Basin, 
Well, they're expected to have things heat up to around 90 degrees again today with their lows tonight a mild 58. And all the way down in the Valley of the Sun at Sky Harbor International Airport, well, it's getting heated up down there. They're expected to top out today right around 96 degrees for a toasty high with their low tonight only dropping to near 67. And that's your Rim Country News headlines for Tano TV, K-Rim Radio News, and Global Trails Media. I'm Randy Roberson. Make it a great Monday.